In this video lectures, I would like to do some demonstration on how to do some simulation for image processing in MATLAB. Okay, I have list up the uh, five uh, important things there. Okay, five, five important things uh, that actually related to our chapter one, two, and three. Okay, now let's take a look at the first one, which is how to read and display image in MATLAB. Okay, you just opened your MATLAB. Okay, uh, for to read your image, of course, image uh, like we have discussed before, MATLAB um, image itself is actually represented by matrix. Okay, one of one way to represent our image is in, is in matrix. Okay, so uh, then you need some variables. Okay, you just declare some variable. I just uh, for those who I, I, I believe that everyone familiar with MATLAB so you can write the code uh, by using M file or you can also write uh, directly the, uh, the the code line by line uh, okay if you want to test uh, any instruction uh, any single line instruction then you can just do it in or type it in the window a uh, common window in MATLAB okay so just declare one one variables okay since we always use f for input image then we can just write f equal to image read okay image read is you want to read image from your uh, memory space inside your computer doesn't matter is it from uh, especially from your hard disk okay so you just write the directories there or the directory where the image located inside your hard disk okay but for easy purpose just drag any image that you want to read into your current folder so easy for you to to read your image because if you your image is at the other location at, at, at your hard disk then you need to like you need to write the long directories okay so but if you if you put it in um, current folder so you do you just can type the, the image um, the image name okay for example let's I'm used uh, let me use uh, for examples yep this one tip.bmp so I just I just type the tips.bmp okay once you execute that instruction then you can see you can see that the variable have been declared there and then once you declare the variables and then now this variable f there appear here at the workspace and it contain the size of the image okay you can see that the size of the matrix there represent the size of the image and you see there is unsigned 8 bit because of this image is grayscale okay this is a one channels um, image okay if you if you recap back what we have um, learned so far in the first chapter we have a single uh, single channel image and we also have multi channel image single channel image is like the grayscale so that's why you can see uh, the size of the metric is the size of is this is a special resolution which is one uh, three four time one four eight and then uh, like i said in computer by default the the intensity level resolution is 8 bit per pixel so you can see that the type of the variable is unsigned 8 bit which is represent the 8 bit uh, per pixel if you talk about in term of uh, intensity level resolution okay you just can click double click you can see the image in form of uh, matrix there okay you can see that that number represent the intensity value of the color of the image again like I said like I said this is the grayscale image okay so if you if you want to display the image there's a many function you can use one one of the function that I like to use is IM tools Okay, you just type im tools then you put the variables then if you click enter then okay that is the image okay this is an implant okay image of implant i think hip implant okay it's a grayscale image okay the good things about im tool is actually uh, when you display the image you can uh, many features that you can use for example you can see here if i move the cursor Okay, you can see the, the 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 coordinate as well as the intensity values there for each and every uh, pixel that when 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 the cursor touch one pixel in in that particular pixel then it display the values there. But you can see that this is a grayscale image, 
and one things that I like in about IM tools you can also use this one okay if you click here then you can inspect the the pixels there okay now this is a grayscale image okay of course like I said the value is from 0 to 255 and then this one is uh, again is an integer value and the range is from 0 to 255 and it should not more than 0 uh, it should not more than 255 it should not uh, less than uh, 0 okay any value that uh, actually when you do some calculations and you find out the value is out of that range then you need to round the number if less than 0 it becomes 0 more than 255 it becomes 255 if you get a floating number you need to round into the nearest integers okay that is how the computer translates each and every value that you obtain from from the simulation okay of course uh, i uh, by by having this uh, i am read and i am tool there's no issue about that later you will see when you do some simulation in any um, image processing approach image enhancement approach you will see that anything that get a floating number or out of range then it will convert into this uh, from 0 to 255 okay uh, now I would like to show uh, this is a single uh, layer single layer or multi chain a single channel image now let's try to open some examples for color image okay for color image I don't have some example here let me take uh, some other examples okay how about we choose this one okay this one I just copy and paste in, inside my current folder so, so easy for me to open okay that is the image okay I just again type f image uh, equal to my uh, image dot jpeg that, that is the image that I paste from my desktop and then again okay you can see after I read the image okay this is the variables again this is a viral f you can see the size there okay previously you only see the 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 size of column and size of row but right now when you read the image the the, the color image you have a size of uh, row i'm sorry size oh yeah size of row size of column and size of a uh, time tree which is represent uh, the r g and b okay it's a multi channel image so that's why you have R, the, the tree or the depth, or we can say this is the, um, of course, this in, in metric form, we always start with um, with a row. So that's why this is Y, this is your uh, X, and this is your Z or the depth of the image. So when the Z equal to 1, it represent the uh, red channel, and when Z equal to 2, it represent the uh, green channel and when the Z equal to 3 that represent the blue channel so that you have a R, G and B so you have three layer matrix okay so even if you display the image by using IM tools then you can see this is the color image and then if you put in your cursor in any points there then you can see at, at this point okay is display the, the the r g and b value so so that's why you have the the, the three dimensional matrix there okay you have x y uh, you have y x then you have time z okay that because you have a three layer matrix or multi channel image that represent by that three layer matrix okay okay there's another function also you can use to display but i i prefer to use uh, im tool because you can access that that feature that you can display the pixels okay you can display the the cursor and when you put the cursors there the pixel is displayed around here that is the advantage of uh, IM tools but you can also use many other function that can display image as well like IM show for example IM show F okay this is another function that you can display okay but the the, the disadvantage about this thing you cannot uh, there's no feature about there's there's no feature that you can inspect the pixels uh, by 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 put in your cursor inside the image okay that's why uh, I always use MN tools because that is an advanced features 
advanced display image um, uh, function as co okay as compared to IM show okay and another uh, disadvan disadvantage of about IM show is actually uh, when you want to display two image at the same time okay let's me uh, let's me write the code again let's say I want to open this one but I call this one F1 okay and then um, when I display by using my IM show F1 okay okay I will display that one okay after that when I want to let's say I read my color image okay I read my color image and then I, 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 I assign F2 as my color image and then when I, I write I am show there F2 okay so what happened is actually the same figure that display before sorry let me repeat again okay when I try to display my I am show there I am just display my image there okay it has been displayed in figure 1 here but when I want to display my figure 2 okay it will use it will use the same figure 1 so in other words the previous figure 1 have been deleted and draw by by this the current uh, image of this I am show so so in order for you to display both together in in your screen then what you need to do is you need to type I am show F1 okay and then then you need to put figures I am show F2 okay then it will by, by having this figure it will request a new figure then it will draw F2 in this new figure so if you forget to type this one then it will it will draw uh, your your current image your color image in the same figures one so that's why you cannot see the previous figure one okay so that this the disadvantage of uh, I'm sure you if you forget to type figure then you cannot display uh, both together in, inside the same screen okay but however for I am I am tools you don't have issue with that okay you just type I am tools F1 okay then I am tools F2 without putting the figure then it will display it will uh, uh, provide the new window to display the image okay that's one advantage of uh, using the IM tools okay another things that I don't share here is I am right okay I am right is for the purpose of you want to save back what you have uh, do inside your hard disk okay you just put the variable for example we have f1 and f2 we want to save f2 back we just type our variable f2 and then we provide the directories there okay you you can put it in current folder or you can put in any location slash d slash what your your name and all the all things you provide then you will save in the the, the location that you give but but it's very uh, rare to to use this one because in general when we do some image processing we just open the image and we process and display the result okay but uh, you let, later let's say you want to save for the purpose of documentation then you can use the I am right but in general when you we, we write some report we always do a print screen to to display the the the, the, the final result from our simulation so then uh, it's very very uh it's very you know very rare to use this i am right okay most of the time we don't use it okay i hope that that is the you, you clear about how to open the image and you can see the structure of the image how the color image is look like and how the the um the, the grayscale image is look like okay so okay this is just some additional okay you can also convert the color image into grayscale okay there's a one function uh, before I I go into the next um, issue okay for example I want to convert my f2 uh, into grayscale then I just create f2 
to gray is equal to okay you can use this function rgb to gray okay that is a function to convert your color image into grayscale and then you put your uh, your image there which is your f2 okay and then you can you try to display the grayscale image the produce grayscale image which is i am tools our f2 gray okay that is the grayscale image uh, after we convert your your color image into grayscale okay if you if you good in in uh, assessing the matrix in in matlab you can also separate uh, each r g and b layers okay i i i i here i would like to demo how to actually you can extract from three layer image into one layer image that represent uh, the one matrix represent the r channel one matrix represent the g channel and one uh, matrix represent the b channel okay what you can do is since you know that your f2 is color image so what you can you can extract is that you can just write f2 you just create one variable okay, i just put it r f2 r is equal to my f2 and then i want all uh, row all column of channel one okay and then you repeat the same to get your g okay because g is channel two then you 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 do the same for b that is for channel three and then let's display all together to see uh, to see what happens there okay i am told my f2 uh, r okay this is my g and this is my b okay this is blue channel and then we have uh, green channels and then we have red channels and then this is our original color image so you can see that this is r this is g and this is b okay since you can see the background here is a blue so that's why you can see the one that have a strong value is at the blue channel okay that's why you see this one is white okay but inside this one is even this is blue is also exists with some uh, green component that's why you can see the, there's a value in in green component however if you see at the red channel it's almost zero okay meaning that this color is really is a combination between green channel and blue channel however blue is more uh, strong at this particular region okay so that, that's one attentive way how you can see the comparison between color image red channel matrix g channel matrix as well as blue channel matrix okay